Hi everyone, so today I'm going to talk about fishes in general and fishes is the plural of um, fish when you talk about multiple different species and of course there's so many different um, species of fishes. Fish is only a plural um, if you're referring to members of one species or as a singular. Just I thought I'd say that because I, it's always something people aren't always sure about. So fishes are something we're so used to, they're all around us. They're animals that often live in water, they're often scaly, and they have so many uses. But even what I said there isn't entirely true. Not all have scales, not all live in water. They might spend periods of time in water, but you could say the same about amphibians. And scales are so common throughout the, um, well, throughout vertebrates, so animals with backbones. Some people might keep them as pets. Now the people, well a large number of people around the world eat fishes and it is a very popular sort of protein source. Fishes as pets are one of the most, well one of the most popular um, pets in the UK. So what if I told you though that fishes don't really, as a word, exist? But, so let me explain. When it comes to classifications of groups of animals, um, scientists like this uh, scientists look for this thing called monophyly or mo uh, ma making sure this classification is monophyletic so that means that a name a category includes an ancestor and all of its descendants so this uh, say for example well with fishes you've got fishes and all of the descendants of fishes Okay, that's fish. I don't know what's happening there. Um, so, this is a problem when it comes to fishes because fishes include multiple ex extant, meaning currently existing, and ex ex extinct groups. And I'll call these groups sometimes clades. A clade is just a group, so. Um, a group of all of its so I probably might switch between the two so the most basal of primitive fishes are known as the jawless fishes and this includes um, uh, what's it called okay now <laughs> um, so this includes ag agonantha which is the hagfishes and also it includes lamprey the next sort of Another category of fishes is cartilaginous fishes um, and these are fishes such as sharks, rays, skates, stuff like that. Si a sister group to these are the bony fishes. Bony fishes are fishes we're a lot more familiar with. Um, the jawless fishes you don't really see around. You might have fished them, you might have eaten them. They're generally seen as pests or just disposal, especially hagfishes they will decompose, help break down um, carcasses in the deep sea and stuff. So bony fishes are also known as osteoichthys, cartilaginous fishes are chondrichthys, ichthys meaning fish, um, osteo means bone, um, chondra I don't really, I'm not really sure of the etymology of that word. So bony fishes can be divided further into ray finned fishes, actinopterygii, and that pronunciation is really butchered. And these are the fishes that even more, uh, these are the fishes that we are even more familiar with, the ones that you'll probably eat, the ones that you'll probably keep. You'll be keeping probably very few of the other groups. The problem though is actually, the problem with fishes is actually when it comes to something called the, well, the group that assisted to this group called the um, lobe finned fishes. These have particular, very complex or interesting, I'd say, pectoral fins. So that is the front paired fins of the fish. Um, and especially when you, so this includes the, um, so this includes lungfish and it also includes um, celiocants. Celiocants have very interesting pectoral fins. They're 
sort of almost you can draw the lines between another relative of theirs and that is that Sarcopterigo, the low fin fishes, actually includes tetrapods and tetrapods are um, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals so does it, that should make all of those fishes but they're not often, they're not really often called fishes and that maybe is the biggest problem with the word fishes but there's so many more so so this is maybe a problem of how we classify organisms if we are looking for that monophyletic group and the same can be said for reptiles so reptiles are um, so reptiles evolved into two different major groups so that is the um, uh, mammals and it also evolved into birds the sort of transition for birds would be the dinosaurs uh, we had other things and I can never remember their name I know there's difference between synapsis and diapsid but I don't really study reptiles so but it is a problem and I guess we are so stuck with these names because we've used them for so long um, and fishes obviously there's a study of fishes and there's a study well herpetology studies amphibians and reptiles um, but then for birds you've got ornithology an interesting thing about fishes is what might have actually been classified as fishes in the past and I know in some countries like Japan um, at one point whales were classified as fishes and I can't see that being um, any different from in the past here before we learned that they're mammals. When it comes to defining a group there's usually a set of characteristics that are shared by all members um, but excluded from others or a sort of a set, a mixture, like they have this but don't have this. So for mammals, given the name, a lot of people think that mammals must be furry, they must be uh, warm-blooded, they must give birth to live young. Mammals are generally defined by the mammary glands and this is the ability to produce uh, milk. Of course other animals can do some sort of, um, produce some sort of um, nutrients, so discus fishes will produce a mucus that their offspring will feed on, but for mammals specifically they have this mammary gland. Um, not all mammals give birth to live, there's um, a cut, oh my god, echidna, echidna will uh, lay eggs from memory and then you've also got um, the whole complex uh, marsupial group of them not they don't lay eggs um, platypus are, are one that I think also lay eggs and I can never remember the name of the group but um, that the egg laying mammals but um, marsupials have very interesting sort of um, sort of the way that the embryo oh I don't know if you it, the gestation period is very short before it starts going into the pouch where it will literally just crawl up and they're very small which is very contrasting from say humans where well the gestation period is so short that the um, is nine months and obviously that the brain is still growing but some animals do go on for longer um, have really long gestation periods I think is it two years for elephants Anyway, so most fishes have a backbone, but hagfishes don't. And uh, instead they just have a simple notochord, they do have a cranium. But a cranium backbone obviously is found in, cranium is found in all what we call craniates, and that is them onwards. Um, the notochord is found in chordates, so that... Um, is found in sort of um, sea squirts, generally in the juvenile stage of a sea squirt before they metamorphosize and also it's found in um, a lancelet which is another sort of very primitive, um, I don't, it's difficult to say primitive but it's another chordate. Um, the lancelet is actually quite interesting that it might not, it's probably not the closest relative to fishes, it's most likely that um, the sort of vertebrates and craniates evolved from sea squirts possibly 
uh, De Ura Chordate is the scientific name for the group and actually the Chordate um, sorry the craniates and the vertebrates might have evolved from um, some sea squirts that didn't actually metamorphosize and we, you see across the animal kingdom animals that don't so axolotls are a good one but it, and there's other ones you can induce things not to actually metamorphosize and some generally more to metamorphosis and a lot of animals they seem to have different time spans before they metamorphosize in frogs you can see it quite obviously where some to, um, frog spawn will go through another winter um, will go through the winter before metamorphosizing and it really depends on environmental conditions so this means that hagfishes aren't vertebrates so not all fishes are vertebrates and lamprey do have a cranium and this means that they're them onwards the lamprey onwards are vertebrates so all vertebrates generally onwards have that cranium skull and whether it's formed or cartilage or bone it's still the same similar structure when people think of fishes gills uh, fish fishes gills are kind of the most obvious feature the flaw with gills as a defining feature is they're actually found in amphibians a lot of if you look at juvenile amphibians especially they will have um, so juvenile frogs, juvenile um, salamanders, juvenile um, newts. They generally will have that um, gill. They will have gills. Some adults will, so especially those that live a more aquatic lifestyle, will retain those gills. So they're not exclusive to fishes. Beyond that, fairy, fairy angle, fairy angel, uh, the arches that the gills are formed on. They're actually found in generally all vertebrates in embryonic stages, so even humans in the embryonic stage. And this um, is just, they, they don't look anything like gills, but it shows how evolution, there is a lot of shared structures and it, you call them probably homologous structures, fishes, um, structures that are similar or come from the same origin but have different um, shapes and forms so take hands, fins um, in mammals so your um, front limbs um, change it to hooves in horses um, or horses and ungulates so it's very difficult fins are another thing that people really think fishes when they see it Fins are found in vertebrates. It's a very successful adaptation to have fins when living an aquatic lifestyle. You could also say it's found in amphibians, given their juvenile stages, but they don't have those pectoral fins. But then, I don't know about the real skeletal detail of eels, but they don't often have pectoral fins. Um, but I don't really know that much about eels entirely so it's very difficult a lot of aquatic there's a lot of what we would call convergent evolution when it comes to fins as they're so successful you've got think about what has evolved to live in water you've got sharks which are very similar really to cetaceans which are dolphins whales that lot and then you've got on the more extinct route, you've got ichthyosaurs. And ichthyosaurs, I would say, are much more similar to um, sharks in morphology, but they're not even, there's no shared um, evolution. They're totally, they're not even closely related. That is just evolution towards what is a beneficial body, sh um, body plan for that environment. There's other sort of. Um, adaptations that are quite interesting to water and I think even turtles they have those flippers and whether these the fins are formed like a traditional uh, fishes ones um, or whether they're more mammalian or reptilian but the evolution is pretty interesting the one thing I would say is possibly actually looking at 
embryonic stages and that's where you can see a little, maybe some convergence but not all fishes have that um, fin anyway so you can't really say all fishes have the fin um, ha have sort of fins like that lesser known features swim bladders aren't found in all fishes lateral line in, um, is also found in amphibians the web airing apparatus isn't found in all fishes. I believe it's only found in, I will say ray fin fishes, but it might be um, bony fishes in general. So this really begs the question, what is a fish? And I would say fishes just exist. They are a paraphyletic group. They have um, one ancestor but not all of the descendants while we see fishes as looking similar it might be just because they share that very successful body plan and that aquatic body plan and that's what makes fishes so successful in water it doesn't mean that they're primitive um sometimes those body forms that last so long are oh, because they are so successful take crocodiles take sharks take um well hagfishes lamprey um most primitive of organisms might be just so far well it might be so successful so it's not an insult that it shouldn't be something bad and i wouldn't say it's entirely primitive no species is primitive because they still exist today they're not an ancestor they're not the same species they were before all species evolve in some way the DNA is always mutating there's always some difference so I'm gonna end that video there thank you for watching and if you like my videos please uh, comment like subscribe whatever and thank you